There's no, no speed. speed control. Let's see if our speed or lock side. Marianne was talking about opposites of what is light. And in one place, in, in this will sound like a contradiction. So this is one of these things to ponder. It starting to says, the opposite of light is gravity. And he's not referring to lightness, like in levity, but he's actually referring to what then can illuminate. It's the opposite, it's opposite as gravity or obscurity. So what does that leave darkness? In Goethe's theory of light, darkness is not the absence of light, like we want to think, but darkness is its own active force that blends with light. In our soul, according to all the ancient legends, we are both light and dark in our soul, and that's how you get colored auras. The darkness in us is not to be equated to evil. We are beings of light and dark. So what about this term levity that we've used? So all of the ethers, the sort of non-fallen ethers, have this tendency, if you think of what warp does to things, when we make a burnt offering to the gods, we are returning something that can float upwards. So we are adding or releasing its levity the warm ether and the light ether also and the chemical ether have this um, well in chemical we start getting a little different but we and, and so there's a wonderful book by uh, Ernst Lairs called Man or Matter mm -hmm. and he tries to go into this question of the relationship of light and dark to um, the questions of levity and gravity. There's some other interesting experiments when you take a beam of light and you send it through a, a magnetic field that some light goes through and it continues at its velocity, but some light is pulled uh, towards the North Pole and some towards the South Pole of the magnet. And this one moves at 90% of the speed of light and this one moves at 10% of the speed of light. <coughs> so that's alpha rays, beta, and gamma. You may have heard of those. Now, um, what's interesting is the sum of all of these still makes for the speed of light. So levity is property would just make sense with prayers, right? Because we send our light or prayers up. Right. So we need levity to carry them up. Yeah. And humor works too. <laughs> what, but what about uh, Steiner saying that gravity isn't really the way we understand it either because he says uh, things the spiritual beings are um, holding from the outside. In other words, it's not that you know things fall to earth because it's gravity in the center of the earth, but he says the spiritual beings hold it in from the outside. So ask yourself the question, where do we need light? And I will say, because you're not going to answer your word people with the camera, but that's our thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's where we need the levity. Where do we, and, and, and we have the image in the sense that our brains are weightless. If we take them out of the fluid, the cranial fluid, mm -hmm. 
They're very heavy and they would crush the blood cells around them. But it floats perfectly like a boat. Because it's in water. I mean, it's, it's in it's the brain fluid. Right, these mm -hmm. cranial fluids. Same with the blood corpuscles. Right. So um, we need this levity there. Then we have the gravity for the uprightness, for the will. So in our dealing with virtue and what we do in the world, we need the gravity. So like light and dark, we have levity and gravity, all part of who we are as human beings. So the next question is, what's energy? Because we all talk about it, and I, I almost want to scream at times when my new age friends are around and they start talking about energy. Mm -hmm. Me too. <laughs> and I think they have no idea what they're talking about with energy used. And I can't even say I know what energy really is. I think this is another one of these concepts. But um, <clears throat> According to this expression, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. That's what physics uses for its definition. And so it's a product both of mass, but also of some concept of measurement, which is a distance, against time. And then we square that. Very difficult concept, I think. And does that feel like what energy is? So light, when we measure it within Earth confines, is essentially infinite. We can't really measure it on Earth. We have to do something uh, like bounce it off of the moon or something like that in order to measure the speed of light. So um, it's it's really moving from a mass, which also Steiner talks about as something that we don't have good concepts about. So we're moving from matter to energy, and we're moving from something that's measurable to something that's immeasurable, something that's ponderable in some ways to something that's imponderable. I now, Your meaning there is much different than E equals MC squared. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But are you are are you wrong? Are they wrong? Or is there something that they apply to different realms? And 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 maybe they're valid in each of their realms. Um, we talked about old Saturn, the beginning time where there was only warmth warmth without any particle. So warmth was not the rapid molecular bouncing around. Um, <clears throat> but we have a law of conservation of energy that I can, I always have the same amount of energy in a system, but I can change it into mechanical energy or into heat or other forms of energy. Um, Steiner says, in the human, that's true out there, as long as it's no observer. But in a human being, it's, that law does not hold. And so this kind of can get to what you're saying about auras and so on. Um, and, and so I'm going to ask the question, or, or ask you to think about the etheric realm in regards to energy, as well as the fallen ethers in regards to energy. We have the four elements in, in science today. We have the four states of matter as solid, liquid, gaseous, and plasma states that correspond to the four elements. So then 
in order to try to answer the first two questions, we have to try to answer the question, what is a field? So I gave three different pictures of a field. This is a magnetic field where you have a negative pole and a positive pole. And you have an infinite number of these lines between any two of those lines. And so you get um, something that will go out all the way to infinity this direction and somehow wrap around and come back this way. You have projected geometry, you know what that is, here in magnetic in field theory. But these aren't the only kinds of fields that are imagined. Here's another sort of field in which these come closer and closer and closer from the infinite one. So it comes off in this direction, wraps around, and comes back here. And then you get something that starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller, wrapping within this area. And that's a gravitational field? That would be gravitational. Well, no, this is the gravitational field. Oh, so what's the other one? Um, no, it's not. Um, that's not magnetic. This is your magnetic field. Um, if I'm, I, I may be mistaken, um, but um, there's something in stellar evolution of binary star systems and something called an accretion disk, but um, I'm, my memory of all of that is too weak to try to, so, um, but this is how they're conceiving of gravity as a, and, and so they're saying, here we'll do it in two dimensions. So think of it, and it's actually three, think of first as a sheet. And you put something heavy in the sheet, and it bends the sheet down in all these directions. So these black lines can conceive of it like a sheet. Okay, so if you had lines on the sheet, and you put something heavy, it would look, would have this deforming, and that would be the heavy thing, the yellow thing. And now if I rolled a, a marble and the marble started here, the marble's going to roll down that direction. Okay? And now go from two dimensions to three dimensions, and now you've got this in space kind of thing. And that's what they're saying is how to picture gravity, a gravitational field. It's a trampoline. Sorry? It's a trampoline. Yes, a trampoline, right, <laughs> exactly. And how when a person's standing in the middle, you know, if you had a ball on the trampoline that rolls into where you're standing. You know. So um, I asked the question, do etheric forces work like fields? Is there something similar? A concept was brought up, um, and Olive Witcher and um, Adams, Hazel Strager. Um, yeah, Who's the other one? This first name, I'm sorry. Um, and then. Um, Elizucha? Oh, uh, no. Uh, he's already passed um, recently from England. Um, has wrote the book, The Battle for the Etheric Realm. Somebody's sorry. still living? No, he's passed. Anyway, it'll um, come, it'll come. The idea of counter space. If you create something from nothing, imagine if you do that. I have nothing here, nothing. Well, you can use the embryology example. Well, I'm going to do this one yeah. right now. So, out of the space of nothing, if I create something, I can still have nothing if I create the exact opposite of that. So if this thing comes out and it's turning this way, this thing will come out and turn the opposite way. If this thing has in space, fills space outwardly, the other one fills space in a negative way. And so that when I combine the two, it makes for nothing again. They negate each other. They negate each other. So we have actually a concept of antimatter. And there have been people who presume that maybe there's a whole universe of antimatter. 